Hi, welcome to the 13th floor. I'm Marty Duda, and today it's Jan Hel it's award-winning singer-songwriter <laughs> Jan Helrigal. Hi, Marty. How are you doing? <laughs> Very good. See, I read the book, and I know that you like to be uh, called that. <laughs> award-winning. Oh, well, you have no idea. Yeah, well, I wasn't sort of. Uh, I didn't didn't like. I didn't even know I was for a while, but then I remembered. Yeah, you did. It was took a while. Back in 1993, was it or something? Yeah, like it was that? a long time ago. Yeah, but yeah. No, congratulations on the new album and book. Yeah. Sportsman of the Year. Yeah. Um, just to get it started, because, well, first of all, the whole idea, I was trying to think of, well, somebody else must have put out a book with an album at the same time, the corresponding chapters. It seems like a no-brainer. I know. Has anyone, have you, have you thought of it? Look, I've been looking too, because yeah. I think it's a world first. Yeah, I think you might be what right. What do you think? Yep. No, I can't I think mean, of You know else. about music? <laughs> A You've bit. been around it for a long time. <laughs> that I have been. Have you found anyone that's done that? <laughs> no, it's it's pretty so, cool. Do you think it's a world first? Yeah. Yeah. So when did the idea come to you, and how did it come to you? Oh well, I was um, I made I was part way through the album, and I was really happy with it, and thinking, gosh, you know, that's a great album, but no one r will really care, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, except me and the people that played on it. And then I thought, oh gosh, you know, I'll put this, if I put this album out, you know, it'll it'll go on the charts for about. A week and then it will disappear into a sock drawer and no one will ever hear of it again right and uh, i thought oh, i don't want that to happen I'd like to these songs to at least get a chance because i think they're my best work right and then i thought i'd uh, release it under a, a, a pseudonym or an avatar because uh, i was watching I, I read ready player one and <laughs> i thought that was a really good idea <laughs> <laughs> and, I thought, oh, I, and i set up a website and everything and i was ready to go out with a completely new look and name and then uh, I then I woke up one day and went, oh, actually, that's probably not as, that's a bit silly. And um, I know, I'll write a book. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write a book. That's, a, that's what I'll do. And, and then, then people kind of notice because it's um, a bit different. Right. Something different. I didn't realize how different it was. Yep. Uh, and then I went into work one day and I said, hey, everyone, I'm going to write a book. And they all looked at me and went, oh, okay, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then I was consumed with it for about like uh, 18 months. Right. Every weekend, yep. in the nights, because, you know, I work a day job. Yep. People, I was everywhere I was, I was writing. So. And did it come easily? Uh, once I knew what I was doing, yes. Yeah. Um, it didn't, it took me a lot of drafts. So, I, you know, I had to learn how to, to write and that's for a book. Yep. I, when I was um, a lot younger, I used to like write lots of letters to people. Mm -hmm. I wrote hundreds and hundreds of letters. This kind is before the internet these days, and before fax. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I think um, that's where my writing style comes from. It's very chatty. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you um, read it. But Conversational. Yeah, yeah. So it's well, you know what it reminded me of. Have you read Dylan's Chronicles book? No, but I, I think I better. Yeah. Well, he it's uh, it, it, he just picks moments in his career. Oh right. It's not like a straight autobiography or anything. He just picks yeah. these little things and. It's like you're in his head. He's just telling you what happened, you know? Yeah, and that's, I, I enjoy those yeah. sort of stories. And I got the same yeah. feeling from reading this as well. Oh, good. Yeah, no, that's, um, that's good. Yeah, so. That's and it's very thing. inspirational. <laughs> I mean, is, is that kind of part of what you had in mind? Oh, no, I did. I did want to actually give that message. Yeah. Um, because I do know there's a lot of people out there that struggle with a lot of things, and um, life is kind of hard sometimes. And um, not just about music either. Right. It's a it's a, it's talking about life in general because we all go through some pretty big things in this lifetime. It's some hardships and things that aren't exactly f easy. And so what I'm saying uh, is pretty much uh, all those hard things actually become the sum of us now, and it's okay. You know, you just you got to keep you got to keep going. You got to. You got to kind of climb those mountains, get to the top, and then you got to build another one to climb. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. it doesn't matter because you get fitter and fitter as you go, and then, right. and then you know, even even now, who knows what's happening, going to happen tomorrow? We've only got today. Yep. Uh, but even uh, now, I actually feel I'm very, very strong and and confident and ready to face the world. But it's taken a very long time to get here. But then, how long it takes each person to get to where they're going, I don't know. But um, I'm quite philosophical about life in general <laughs> at the moment, so yeah, that's... But even uh, from reading the book, 
I mean, you talk about uh, when you first were in the music business in, in the early 90s and you were mm. traveling around over uh, in Australia. Late 80s. Actually. Late 80s, actually. That's mid, right. Mid to late 80s. Because yep. yeah. you had Cassandra's ears before <laughs> yep, that. Yep. I, I work with one of your former oh, Leanne. bandmates, Leanne. Leanne yeah. Ivo, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, she's awesome. But um, it seems uh, that you, you had a pretty strong feeling about what you wanted to do and what you didn't want to do even back then. Yeah, I've always been really very singular. Right. Singular in my determination. <laughs> yeah. So how did that mix with the fact that, I mean, you suffered from some anxiety and some, you know, yeah. n n lack of confidence sometimes and, of course, well, the music business. I kind of grew out of all that yeah. stuff. It all disappeared. Um, and I think, um, and looking back at it, now I know why, why I had it all, mm -hmm. what, why, what it was. Um, again, I'm quite philosophical about it because if I hadn't have had all those things, maybe if my career had been really plain sailing and easy and suddenly I was really famous and it was all going great, maybe I wouldn't be here today mm. um, because I wouldn't have done all the things that I've done because of the, you know, um, because things didn't quite go according to plan or what I thought was going to happen when I was uh, in my 20s. and. Um, so I had to kind of find another way. And for many years, I actually didn't think I'd be doing music again. I, you know, so I did drift off the, mm -hmm. and do other things. I did marketing and business and all sort of stuff. Yep. But, um, but, and this is, for most musicians will understand this, music doesn't ever leave you. Mm. She's a very harsh mistress, is our <laughs> music, but she never leaves. So when I, the last time I saw you perform was a year ago at the Pump House when you were opening for Dominic Blazier. Yes, and I was one, trialing some songs. Yeah, yeah, but one got the feeling even from the, you played maybe like 10 songs, I think, mm. or something like that, that you were bursting, busting to get out and do it. You, know, you had these songs that you wanted people to hear. Yeah. Is that what was yeah, no, going on? Yeah, and then it took me another year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now I'm like, yeah. <laughs> no, um, yeah, I just... Uh, yeah, I have, I have got some, you know, I'm, I'm kind of ready to go and do some stuff again. Mm -hmm. I, I do feel like it's time. And I think uh, my voice is at the best it's ever been. The, it's got a really good quality at the moment. And um, I'd really like to get my pipes out, sing. Right. Uh, and play the piano. And, you know, I was rehearsing today with my band, um, with just a small part of the band. like not the, And it was just great. The songs mm. are great. So I'm looking forward to taking them to the public and seeing what they think. Right, right. Mm. Um, so when did, did the song, how far back do the songs go when the ones that are on the album, were, when were they written? They were all written like in the last, in the last few years. There's yeah. a couple that go stretch right back, but, but sometimes I have a, an idea and I don't actually finish it for mm -hmm. a few years. Just depends when I have some time. <laughs> and, and then of course, there are tw 12 songs, 12 chapters to the book, mm. and they kind of vaguely, I was kind of worried at first that it, they were going to be like literal kind of, and I was like, I'm not sure if that's what I wanted to read, but it was much better because you just used the songs as kind of jumping off points, I think, to kind of Yeah, no, I'm, I'm never literal. Yeah. I um, mean, there's a lot of metaphors in my writing, and also, um, and some stuff, sometimes it's a word that's a whole paragraph, mm. and you won't know what that is, do you know, like... And, and I never, you don't really want to, um, you don't want to tell people how to hear something. Mm -hmm. You want them to experience it themselves. Right. And someone might hear something that, um, that I won't hear. And that's great because it kind of is their, their way of looking at it or hearing it. Mm -hmm. So no, I'm, I'm never going to be exact about what my songs are about. Right. Sometimes I can, there's a little pointer there, but yeah. you yeah. know, not too obvious. Yeah. And obviously, there's a lot of personal information in the book about you you're growing up and you in yeah. the music business. Mostly funny stuff. Mostly funny stuff, but some I serious quite, stuff. Quite, well, some of that stuff is, I just find it <laughs> hilarious. I laugh my head off when I think about it. That's why I, <laughs> I think they're really funny stories. In fact, most some of the stuff that you might think is really serious, I actually found really funny as well. I actually look back at things and go, oh my God, that was so funny, but heartbreaking, but funny. Right. You so know. did you, have you gotten any reaction from some of the people who you may have been writing about? Or Well, I think you'll find that the, no one in there, mm -hmm. uh, no one in there that um, would mind the story I've told because right. they're funny stories or right. that. And they might not even know. I mean, most of the people, like the um, uh, 
Ian, the, the, the guy that did the um, Sportsman of the Year, you know, I think yeah. he won't even remember. He probably <laughs> doesn't even remember this. You know, I don't even know where he is. But uh. <laughs> so I, I thought it was sort of. I don't think he'd mind if he read it. I think he'd find it really amusing because mm. he'd go, "Who? <laughs> what? Can't remember that." So did you read the? Uh, there were some comments in the paper recently. It was Shane Carter wrote his autobiography. Oh yeah, and yeah, And then yeah. they picked out the one bit about him and Neil Finn having this alleged feud and oh, it, yeah. it was just you know blown out of proportion and all I that. I know. So. I kind of I, I kind of don't, try not to get embroiled in um, things, but then I don't really have any uh, stories like that. I don't actually even have anyone that I feel any animosity towards or. Mm. Or I've never had, um, uh, I've never really had feuds with people. They might have had them with me, but I, can, <laughs> but I don't hold on to uh, things really. Right. And, um, uh, and, and mostly I look back at most people and think, well, they've all been quite wonderful in yep. their own way. It's just that um, sometimes you don't get on, you know, sometimes, sometimes you're great and people don't like you. Not everyone's going to like you all the time. I like the story about how you first met Wayne Bell, your producer, yeah, drummer. Yeah, that was, and yeah. He was coming in as kind of a, uh, to replace your drummer that you had in your band because the I producer know, wanted a session drummer, I right? No, yeah, so. that was just, that was heartbreaking for me. Right. Yeah, I really didn't talk to Wayne for a few days. <laughs> oh, and I could stew, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but see, it turned out all right. Yep. Everything turned out fine. Yeah, exactly. And so. that's what I'm learning, you know. Sometimes, you know, you might miss out on something um, and then you go, oh, dang, dang. And then you find out, oh, that actually, pff, lucky I missed out on that. Right. And so now I'm kind of thinking if something goes wrong, because things invariably every day or, you know, work or, you know, think something as it goes a bit um, askew. My thing is now is like, okay, well, I'll just roll with that and see what happens because it could be a good thing. Right. So I'll try and find a good thing, <laughs> you know, and that seems to be working. <laughs> um, and speaking of family and friends, I, I found the, the chapter about your mother was extremely mm. heartbreaking and emotional and was that a, you know. Yeah, but I think I, I think I did good for yeah. my mum. Yeah, and I think a lot of <laughs> a lot of people, especially a lot of women, are going to relate to yeah, the they, whole yeah, part, you know the relationship people, between yes. the two of you. Yeah, no, a lot of a lot of women will relate to that completely, and um, and uh, I'm glad, I'm glad I got that out, and I'm glad I wrote that song. Mm -hmm. It's one of my best songs, and um, and I couldn't think of any other way to to really express that, and um, and you know, mum did hear it. So, mm -hmm. you know, she kind of understands right. what's going on. But she has heard the song, and songs are really powerful. They they really get through. And even though it may not seem that she understands it, she will. She will have heard that song. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the other song that kind of stands out is "Love and Conviction." Oh yeah. And I remember when I saw, you sang that in, uh, last year at the yeah, yeah. show, and I remember thinking it sounded a little bit kind of Dylan-esque, like yeah. kind of Bob Dylan's 119th Dream or whatever, it had that kind of stream of conscience. Was that kind of where you were coming from with that? or? Uh, I do, I have listened to a lot of Bob Dylan, mm -hmm. so I might have been influenced by him. Um, not, not necessarily uh, I wasn't probably thinking of him, right. but you know, you never know with songs. Um, but but mostly it's the words for me because that song's about loving your job. Right. It's about jobs. Yep. Because I love my job. Yep. And your job is music. Music. But you also work as a music publisher yeah, as it's well, right? Music. It's always yeah. about music. I live in the music world, and that's I love my job. But I've had lots of other jobs, mm -hmm. right? And that they are quite literal in that song. And those, all those other jobs have given me my job now. Right. And so that's basically saying, you know, yes, you may be uh, doing a job that you feel is a bit of a dead end, or you may not really be enjoying where you are right now, and you may have things that you want to do. But while you're doing the job that you're doing, you know, get stuck in and do it, because what, where it's going to take you, uh, well, in my, in my case, it took me to where I wanted to be. And I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing now with all those seemingly dead-end jobs mm. because they taught me 
how to be um, who I am today. So um, that's kind of what that is about. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think music publishing is still kind of one of those mysterious things that nobody really knows what music publishers do. So what, what, what on a typical day at work, <laughs> what do you do? I tried to explain this, yes. It's, it's such a, it's a really, it's a really um, easy thing to explain mm -hmm. if you know much about music. Right. So how I, the best way for me to describe it is that I call it the four P's of publishing. I pr promote music, mm -hmm. I protect it, I, m I, I look for prosperity for my artists, which is income, and uh, what was the other one? Uh, preservation. Uh, preservation. Yeah. So it gets heard um, for as long as we can, because music needs to be heard to live. If you're not hearing it, it's not living. Mm -hmm. It's um, and so those are the, all the things that I do with music. Um, but the outcome of it, from a business perspective, is that it's meant to exploit the music and earn um, the artist or the writer an income. Mm -hmm. Do you have opinions about the streaming whole streaming thing? Well, the streaming thing kind of doesn't impact on the publishing side so much because that's more of a label. Right. Thing. Yeah. There is a little royalty in there called a mechanical royalty, but I'm not going to go into it. <laughs> it's too complicated. Uh, that does affect us, and that royalty. When I was a young artist with a publisher, and that that actually that royalty was quite valuable, and it was a percentage that came out of the sale of a CD. Mm -hmm. But with streaming, because the things are so low, um, that percentage is like tiny. Yeah, yeah. So you know, um, the people that I look after, the mechanical royalty that um, is so small that uh, you know it could take years before they even get enough for me to pay them out on it. Yeah. Uh, me included. I think my 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 latest sort of statements about four dollars <laughs> for the last four years. You so know? can a, a songwriter expect to earn a living writing songs or? Um, well, if you're a really big, so if you you know, if you get a song away, yeah, uh, you can actually earn a lot of money out of songs. Mm. Uh, some some song licenses are very very big; they're um, huge, like you know, uh, a deposit on a house. Yeah, but uh, in Auckland, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. um, but it's just it doesn't it. It's kind of, yeah, it doesn't happen all the time. So, you know, out of the blue, something will happen. But I, I don't know. I, I th there are definitely people that make a living out of it, yeah. for sure. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't just run off and become a full-time songwriter without exploring all the... Uh, yeah, having a little backup, huh? Yeah, or just finding <laughs> out actually how it works and not knowing how it works. But yeah. yeah, I think it's possible. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so now the book is coming out, the album is coming out. You're getting back on... On stage next? Is that yep, the next Back plan? on stage. And what's going to happen there? I'm going to get back on stage and I'm going to announce some shows as soon as I possibly can. Uh, the issue has been logistics. It's really difficult to uh, book some shows at the moment just because um, the book and the CD and the and the and everything has just been so big mm -hmm. and um, and it's just so different. It's taking. A, I mean, I, I need to let it sit with people and percolate for a little while because yeah. it's not just an album. It's a kind of a whole big project. Well, I must say, there's once podcasts you, once, on Radio New Zealand oh, that's right, as well. You know, too, so I mean, it's huge. <laughs> and I thought, well, I might just let people uh, sit with it for a minute because yeah. um, when I come out and perform, uh, it could be that I'm also reading from the book yep. or. Uh, it could be that I, um, I don't know, I'm, I guess I'm going to I'm gonna play it by ear at the, you know, for the next few weeks and see what, what people enjoy the most, and then I'll put the show around that. Cool. All right. Well, we've got to wrap up. I highly recommend the book and the album. Thank you. I read it in one sitting, and that Did never happens. So, <laughs> so oh, thanks awesome. for coming by, Great. doing this, Thank and you. good luck with the whole thing. Thank you. Yep.